7 a.m. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my kitchen at 7 a.m. on Friday, September 11th, 2020. And uh, my uh, job is going to start in about an hour and a half. So this is not going to take that long. Um, I woke up this morning with for whatever reason, with the urge, well, to cook, which is fairly normal, but also today, of course, is September 11th, and I just felt like um, telling a couple of stories about, well, that wonderful day, September 11th, 2001. Um, if you're not interested, you, of course, you don't have to watch this. Otherwise, if anyone cares to uh, stop by, I hope you are entertained. Um, because, yes, I am still doing some uh, cast iron cooking. I mean, after all, that's the whole point. Well, it's not really the whole point of this channel. The whole point of this channel is me. <laughs> this is my personal channel, and I happen to enjoy uh, cooking. So that's uh, what we're doing. And for breakfast this morning, we are going to be making ourselves some fried rice. Because uh, it's nice and easy, which of course means we have some leftover rice. That's the standard. Um, and I have myself a 10 inch uh, vintage cast iron skillet. This is, again, once again, is uh, one of my favorites. This is a vintage Birmingham stove and range um, number eight Red Mountain series, which I'm holding upside down. Let's see if we can do it this way. It's a little better, I guess. And this is going to be a very simple fried rice. I'm not doing some of the traditional stuff, like putting eggs and the like in it. Instead, I'm going to be doing a bacon gravy uh, a little later and mixing that in. A lot of, I mean, I know many, many people like biscuits and gravy in the mornings. Um, for whatever reason, I guess I just didn't grow up much uh, having biscuits and... I like rice, so we'll have a uh, rice and gravy. So with that, let's get started. And then I guess I'm just going to pretty much ramble about whatever comes to mind, which, as I mentioned, will be uh, September 11, 2001. Now, um, first thing is, of course, I do it, it, this that uh, tragedy occurred 19 years ago today. It was on a Tuesday, in fact. Why 19 and why not 20? After all, next year is the 20th <clears throat> anniversary of it. Well, number one, I do not like the term anniversary being used to remember a tragedy, where, as you know, our entire way of life changed, thousands of people died. And it was uh, really the effects of that day still have not ended. So I do not consider this to be an anniversary. Anniversaries are for things like weddings and uh, birthdays and the like. And anyway, there's and for also for that reason, there's nothing special about the fact that next year is twentieth, other than you know it's a it's a year that people can easily remember. Or we, it, it's a five year, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Fortunately, that means while, of course, there will be memorials uh, today, which are very appropriate, um, at least we're not going to have some kind of a grand event like will probably happen next year. One second, I've got to adjust my mouse a little bit. There we go. So as a result, I'm doing this now. And here we go now. Now... On September 11th, 2001, it was a Tuesday, it was a work day, and I was at, uh, and I went to work that morning. A couple of strange things happened, well, this, even in addition to uh, what happened on that day. I work at a, uh, cu I work at a cubicle job, I work in a corporation, and, uh, well, in those, in those days, actually, it was not a corporation. It was a nice, large, successful company, which was then bought out by a corporation a few years later. So we, it, was, it happened, of course, at something like quarter of 10, quarter of 11. I think it was quarter of 10 in the morning in that we were all at our uh, desks taking calls from customers, 
when one of our per when one of our uh, coworkers came by and he announced loudly, "Hey, a hey, a plane hit the World Trade Center." Now, a couple of things. One is at that time I had a girlfriend and I was engaged. We got married next year. Uh, we were divorced about eight years later. That's not the subject here. Um, but anyway, my girlfriend at that time, um, she had her own job. She was a temp. And here in Boston, there is another World Trade Center, a much, much smaller, still large, but nowhere the size of the one in New York. It is a uh, business center uh, right by, uh, on the uh, shore by uh, UMass, by the University of Massachusetts, and that is the World Trade Center. And she was temping there. And when somebody said a plane hit the World Trade Center, my first thought was her. Did something happen to her? Well, and then it, after only a few seconds later, of course, I learned that no, it was not the World Trade Center here in Boston. It was the one in New York. Now, that was very shocking news, of course, but well, plane crashes happen. And I kept on uh, doing my job, at least until about uh, 20 minutes later, when suddenly everyone was in shock as the news came around that a second plane had hit. And my first thought was, wait a second, that's impossible. I mean, how can two planes, you know, because, you know, no, the idea that this was deliberate did not immediately come to mind. And while we're doing this, after uh, a little bit, of course, I mean, at this point, though, this is when the entire... Um, work day pretty much came to a screeching halt in that everyone was uh, up from their desks. There was, of course, a TV in the, uh, um, in the uh, area, and everyone was uh, just uh, gathered around the TV watching a live newscast as we saw both of the uh, towers of the World Trade Center. Uh, well, as you know all too well, they were uh, burning. And for that matter, the entire country was, came to a halt because, you know, calls from customers, they stopped. No calls came in at that moment. We were all around the TV. We just could not believe what was happening, especially as the news came in that it was, in fact, two planes. And the only way that two planes could have, ha could have uh, done this, of course, is if it was deliberate, which meant it was terrorists. So... We were all indeed in a state of shock, and it only got worse when we watched the towers collapse as the, on live TV. Uh, there are, are a few people who believe that it was all fake because it happened on TV. After all, who was there? Well, I had a couple of friends, as it turned out, who were there. They were not in the towers, but they were, but they were there, and they saw it happen. Uh, what happened at that point is I, um, this was 19 years ago, the uh, internet security at my workplace was not quite what it is now in that I was actually able to bring up a uh, live chat with my, with my uh, online friends at the Church of the Subgenius, who I was uh, very much uh, into uh, in those days. And we and people were all popping into our uh, IRC chat at that time, if you remember IRC, to uh, all um, get yeah you know, all to pretty much express shock and as, as to uh, what was going on. Furthermore, we had a few friends in that area in Manhattan, New York, and we were. Uh, rather panicking and trying to find out, was he okay? Uh, this was a guy who, who uses an online name. He calls himself Reverend, uh, God, it's so long, Synthaltimus Ex Mortis, in other words, Reverend Sex. <laughs> yeah, oh, great, and I just spilled rice all over the place. How nice. Well, what can you do? I'll have to pick that up. Sorry about that, folks. Well, the show must go on. 
So anyway, we were all um, you know, pretty much taking a tally of everyone, making sure everyone was all right. Um, none of my close, none of my good friends were hurt on that day. But as I said, a couple of them were there, standing literally outside as they watched the towers fall. And I know Reverend uh, Sex Mortis, in fact, he was... He, it was a real, real shock to him, to the point where he had nightmares for months, could not sleep uh, very well for a long time, and, and even to the point where he ended up moving out of New York City altogether. And instead, he now lives, uh, I believe it's in uh, southern Pennsylvania. Because you got to have bacon in the morning. So anyway, as I mentioned, a couple of weird things happened on that day. Um, one of which, as I said, I worked for a uh, medium to large company at the time. And as it turned out, the CEO of our company, which no, I am not going to mention on the internet. I always keep my employer out of it. The CEO of our, com of our company had a couple of good friends on the planes from Boston, and they were, in fact, lost. They died in that, in that tragedy. So for our company, that definitely hit home. September 11th has always been a uh, time of real, I guess, mourning and sympathy at our company because of that. We also had some uh, field technicians. One, our uh, company actually sends uh, technicians out to uh, senior living communities all over the country. And um, <clears throat> some of our uh, field technicians were in places like uh, Dallas, Texas. I think some, someone was in Florida. Well, if you remember what happened on that day, they put an immediate ban on all flights coming uh, in the country and that all planes were ordered to land right there and then. So our two guys were stuck, one in Texas, one in Florida, and they were not able to uh, leave. And because, you know, of, of the chaos and the panic of that day and that time, in fact, they were stuck there for, I'd say, probably like two to three days before, before they were able to uh, get flights home. They had their company cards, you know, they stayed at hotels, so they weren't homeless, but still. <laughs> um, on the other hand, a strange coincidence occurred that I cannot explain. This is a story told by my then fiancé. Uh, oh, and good morning, Robert Dooley. I'm hoping you can uh, check the beginning of this chat and find out what's going on. Basically, I am, well, making bacon and gravy and talking about September 11, 2001. Now, as I mentioned, on that morning, I was uh, engaged. My uh, fiance, or girlfriend, funny thing was she ended up calling in sick that morning. Now, she, to this day, she claims... I. Yes, I have no real reason to doubt her, but right from that very day, she claims that she had a nightmare that night, that night before, and she woke up with this feeling of dread and apprehension. I mean, she was a temp, you know, she was a temp office woman, but it was so, uh, such a feeling of dread that she happened to call in sick that day, and she did not go to work. It was, of course, the World Trade Center in um, Boston, not in New York, but even so. That is a one strange coincidence that I cannot explain. And quite frankly, if you subscribe to Magical Thinking, you probably feel that there is uh, something ominous about that. As for me, as I mentioned, we were, uh, I was in the uh, Subgenius chat room on IRC at that time, and we found all of our uh, friends checked in. The cell 
service in New York effectively was dead. You know, there were thousands, if not millions, of uh, calls to that area all trying to take place at that time. Cellular service was jammed. Nobody could call in or out. So it was really desperate trying to find out who was okay. And eventually we managed to uh, get in touch with everyone. As I said, one of, uh, one of our friends, he ended up moving out of New York had another friend, she was there, and she watched the towers fall as well, um, and I don't think she ever uh, truly got over it. Now, as for me, as I said, I just watched it on TV, and it was still enough really to really to affect me. Um, what I also know is that a few days after that, <clears throat> they put a curfew on all flights, as you know. No, there were curfews, too, I believe. People were actually told to stay in their homes. But most importantly, there were no flights uh, coming anywhere for at least two to three days. The skies were completely empty. And about a day or two after that, I remember getting on a train on the uh, local T and riding into Boston. And even though it did not happen here... It's like I had this image in my mind that I could practically see planes crashing into the um, two towers here in Boston. That would be the Prudential Building and uh, the John Hancock Tower. Now, when I'm saying I could see them, it's like I've just pretty much created images in my mind. I guess because it had affected me so strong and the images were so vivid, I could project them here. And I was in a shock, and everyone was in a state of shock for a good couple of days or more. Eventually, oh, yeah, and almost probably within an hour or so after the uh, towers fell, as news came in, the talking heads started on CNN. <laughs> and this is where I realized how idiotic you know, mainstream news is as they started doing idiotic things trying to explain what's going on and we brought in experts and i kid you not you can look this up yourself cnn brought in tom clancy the author the of uh, you know of uh, fiction novels as an expert in terrorism they brought him on to uh one of their uh, talking head panel shows <laughs> the next day cnn had a poll up on their uh, website something about were you affected by Tuesday's attacks? Oh, good grief. So, yeah, it was quite a trying time. And I'm not even going to get into, you know, what happened during the months after that, how it became a way, uh, it was the start of what they call the endless war that is, well, really still going on today as the United States began its war on terror. Now, I am no political expert, and this, this subject has been discussed and argued with innumerable times over the last 19 years. I could not say anything new about it. So I mean, I'm hoping my little story here kind of uh, explains my feelings about all that. There, um, let me see. I mentioned that. See, I mentioned the towers and everything. So, yeah, that was September 11th, 2001. Uh, the whole next year, well, it was like it became the topic of discussion for months afterwards. You know how we are right now in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic in 2020, and that's all we're seeing on the news and all people are talking about. You better believe that was all that they were talking about. Um, oh, oh, yes. Uh, the myths and the rumors that started on, uh, on that day. From that very day, some uh, urban legends started. Some, uh, this was, I guess, you know, news that was misread or mistranslated, which unfortunately gave birth to conspiracy theories that we still hear today. Like the claim that there was a fifth plane that was shot down over the Atlantic, which no, was not true, but there were uh, reports about it. 
or the claim that the next day, September 12th, they arrested a second group of terrorists uh, who were getting onto a, a plane or at an airport, which was also not true. And a whole bunch of other things that, um, oh boy, we could really get into this, but <laughs> hey, look, bacon. And actually, it looks like this bacon is getting to the point where I think we can um, set it aside or reserve it. So, let's dig out a bowl, shall we? Keep, keep the precious bacon grease in here because that's kind of the point. But anyway, as I said, today is September 11th, and I just felt like talking about September 11th today. And let's see, we have a couple of comments right now, which is nice. Hello, hi, I enjoy your videos, Terry Rowe. Well, thank you very much. Do you recommend a 15-inch pan or a 12-inch pan for a family of three? For a family of three, probably a 12-inch pan. They are, um, that's probably about as useful you can get uh, for an everyday user for a, um, a nice big cast iron pan. Also, it's about as big as you can get to cook evenly on your stove top. Even then, a 12-inch pan will take some time to heat up evenly at the edges. 15-inch pan? Yes, I do recommend getting one because I get a lot of use out of my uh, big pans. I've got a uh, BSR 15-inch, which I call Stumpy. Um, so, yes, but use, but Stumpy comes out for special occasions, um, of which there are many. I'm going to be bringing them out tomorrow, in fact, to make a huge, giant 15-inch cookie. That's going to happen tomorrow morning. So I would otherwise recommend, though, getting a 12-inch uh, pan for, for a family of three. Um, let me see. I'm, we've got a little bit of bacon grease right now. I think we will... supplement this and then after that will come the uh, the gravy no 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 nothing just talking to the camera supplement this a little bit If there's one thing nobody ever said about bacon grease, the gravy, is that it's healthy. We don't eat we don't eat gravy because it's healthy. We eat it because it's delicious. Oh, so that was, as I mentioned, September eleventh, two thousand one. A lot of strange things happened that day. A lot of stupid things happened that day. There was a lot of tragedy that day. About 2,500 people lost their lives. And even for those of us who did not know anyone personally, that doesn't matter. They were all, they were all brothers and sisters, you know? Not just because they were Americans, but that certainly helps. But they were all people like you and me. And... I'm still remembering them. Because of that, I would like to encourage anyone else, if you want to do something in memoriam, or a memorial, I guess, for September 11th, you know, there's no reason, no good, re no reason not to. Besides, that's one of the good reasons why I enjoy cooking anyway. It makes good therapy, or as I like to say, I, I consider this to be a form of meditation. It helps me to focus and, um, and put the rest of the world aside, at least while I'm here, standing here over my cast iron. And I find that to be very relaxing.
course, if you've got a big family, I know breakfast is not that relaxing because, of course, you've got people to feed. First, you got to make a roux. For those of you who just dropped by, good morning. This is a Birmingham Stove and Range Red Mountain Vintage cast iron pan. One of my favorite kitchen users. Uh, Terry Jones, depends on your stove. Big ones are good for pizza. Yeah, they're also great turkey roasters. Hint, hint. I mean, after all, the holidays are coming. Oh, you like the video of making the cookie? Good, because again, that's what the, tomorrow is going to be again. Because it's all because yesterday was my godson's second birthday, and uh, we are having a party for him tomorrow. Also have something else I'm going to do tomorrow night, and I'll probably go live for that as well. A different subject from September 11th, but rather something personal that happened on September 12th, 2010, not 2001. But I will get into that later. Hmm. Maybe a wee bit more. Besides, September 11th was one of those excuses they used, as you know. And here is where the politics come in. And I hate politics, and I'm not an expert on politics. But I guess since I just brought the subject up, I'll say a couple of things. 9-11 truthers suck. No, they're, no, they did not intentionally blow up the towers. That is idiotic, and it's been dis disbunked and disproven many, many times. On the other hand, my personal feeling is that not too long after the towers fell, they uncorked the champagne bottles at some place like maybe the White House or the uh, Pentagon. Well, no, the Pentagon had been hit. Well, other probably uh, other places because it was the perfect excuse they needed to get their war on. <laughs> and yeah. Then that's when that fun started. My brother served in the Iraq War. He was part of the 82nd Airborne. He went into, uh, I think he went into Kuwait, and he saw some action of which he has not said very much. And I frankly have not asked, but he did have to use his gun. That's why I'm not going to say anything else. And I think we are getting to the point where I'd better start making a real gravy. down a little bit now. That's really, yeah. It took me a long time to be able to make gravy at all, and I still can't claim to be an expert at it. But I'd like to think I'm getting better. The fun thing about cast iron is it, it, it gives you a very, very thick gravy, and if you don't keep adding milk or whatever your favorite liquid is to it, it will just keep getting thicker very fast. So you won't just have a gravy, you will have library paste. Tasty library paste. <laughs> and I'll bet some of the folks here may even remember how it was when we were in grade school, we ate the library paste. So, yeah, these days they tell people not to eat Tide Pods. Well, in those days, don't eat library paste. Although, at least the library paste tasted terrible, but no, you didn't die from it. I think we can put the 
rest of this bacon back in. We got bacon gravy. See what I mean? This is getting very thick already, but I think we're almost done here. And besides, that's really what I'd wanted to do. I'd wanted to just let a few things out about September 11th, because that's what uh, today is. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But like I said, I just felt like doing this, and again, I hope people enjoy it. Besides, it's yet another excuse to cook. And any excuse to cook is a good reason. Turn this off now. Because I would say we got ourselves some gravy. And once again, I'm getting it all over the place. Oh, just how I am. Put this milk back. And uh, making pizza. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay. Well, I'd say we are about done anyway because I accomplished what I wanted. That is, talked a little bit about uh, September 11th. And more importantly, we have some fried rice with bacon gravy. Completely unhealthy, but again, we don't have gravy because it's healthy. We have it because it's delicious. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, as I mentioned, I do intend on doing a couple of other videos within just the next couple of days because I know, I apologize, it's been like a week or so, uh, other than the tortilla video, um, and I hope to make up for that. But thank you very much for watching, everyone, and please, uh, pl please continue posting your comments, and what's the saying they use? Oh, yeah, like, subscribe, share. And which would be very nice. I mean, I very much appreciate everyone who's who's watched and enjoyed this. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good morning. <laughs>